Recently, I've been really enjoying making um, music with these little um, pocket operators. And one reason why is because after a day of work on the computer, I don't feel like using Ableton or looking at a computer to do sequencing. So I've been using these for a little while and um, they've got some built-in effects, but they don't have um, reverb or delay because I guess they're a bit too CPU or memory intensive. Um, and I was wondering about what there is available out there. And then I remembered um, Paul um, from PJRC very kindly gave me one of his Teensy 4 boards when I met him at um, Hackaday Supercon last year. So I ordered one of these um, breakout audio boards that has a, a little I2S audio chip and a, a jack and some pins to break it out. Um, and did a little bit of looking on YouTube and it turns out there's um, a cool audio projects. Here's something I uh, found. This is like a synthesizer and then this is a, an effect. So there's, there's plenty of stuff out there. Uh, so I thought I'd give it a bash myself and um, uh, make a few videos about uh, the process that I've uh, gone through to um, make a little effects unit, which is still ongoing. So uh, the first part is uh, setting up the programming environment for the uh, Teensy. So I prefer to use Platformio or Platformio to do that. Um, Platformio um, boards and then grep for Teensy. This is the Teensy 4. And uh, one of the great things about the Teensy 4 is just how powerful it is. So it's 600 megahertz and it's got a meg of RAM on it. So it's quite good for doing things like long delays, um, plenty of power for doing reverbs. So if we set this project up, so you do uh, Platformio init uh, Teensy 40. Oh, now I need to use a board. There we go. And then I get um, a platformio.ini file that sets things up here and a source directory. And um, let's just do a, a really basic test. So one of the super cool things about the, um, the audio support for the Teensy is um, this Node.js JavaScript interface. So I've got a really simple uh, proof of concept here where the um, line input goes into a mixer to mix it down to mono into a reverb and then out on the I2S and you need um, uh, one of these control modules as well so you can turn it on and enable it and then you press export copy that and then paste that in here and then we need a little bit of extra um, stuff paste that in there so it needs a bit of audio memory even if you're not really doing much uh, just for the connections you need to enable the uh, chip and set the volume and you need to set the input to be what you want we're not actually doing anything in the loop um, so all the audio stuff just gets uh, done for you in the background and you can monitor how much cpu and ram usage you've got so um uh, let's flash that. Um, upload it. Compile it. So um, if we have a look at what we've got here, we've got a few directories and we can put includes and libraries in there. And then um, in your home directory, you get uh, a lot of um, support. So depending on which platform you've installed, you'll get these different um, tool chains and all the, all the programs you need. And they all get installed in parallel there for the things that you need. OK, I need to plug this Teensy in now. Let's have another go. <clears throat> OK, so that is looking like it's good. So if I was, uh, unplug the pocket operator, plug that in here. So 
So uh, you can see how easy that is to get started. And that kind of convinced me that it was worth having a little bit of more serious play with making my own uh, master effects unit to play around with for the uh, pocket operators that I jam with. Do 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 do. So I wanted um, to have a reverb and a delay, uh, mostly for the master effects, and then to play around with. So this is the audio pathway that I came up with. Um, got the input here, over here on the left and the output on the right, and then I've got a stereo reverb um, with a, a filter in front of it. And I've got a two delays here wired up, wired up as a ping pong. So the output um, is of one is fed back into the opposite channel of the other with filters in front of them. And then I've got a noise source as well, a pair of uh, noise generators with filters and then everything being mixed down to the output. And uh, what I wanted was to be able to capture parts of the sound as it flows through. So have a wet dry effect. Um, but then be able to selectively um, turn up and capture little elements of the sound and send them into either the reverb or the delay or both. Um, so I made this and it was um, uh, it let me play around with it a bit, but uh, there's no interactivity. So what I needed was to create something that lets me experiment with the parameters to know how many um, knobs and buttons I'm going to need to add if I uh, turn this into a circuit board and be able to play with it without needing a computer. So I'll show you what I've done for that. So I've got um, the main thing here is that um, I've, got a, I've got a really simple serial interface where I read um, a couple of bytes off the serial input. And then depending on what the first byte is, I'll use the second byte to affect some parameter. So I've got all of these different case statements here that then do different things. And if we take a look at this enum here, these are my parameters that I ended up uh, wanting to be able to control. And then being able to control them over serial uh, means that I can use um, what was this? One. Okay, so now I've got a, um, a controller that allows me to uh, control each of those effects. So let's just check this is working. And then after I'd um, successfully got all that working, I started thinking about what it is about the pocket operators that makes them so playable. Um, so, for example, if I start a loop playing here, it's got something called punch in effects, which lets you put an effect uh, and punch it in. Um, so it's like either the, the, you're sending it to the effect or you're not, and that can be automated. And I want to do a, a punch in uh, effect on just say the hi hats. That out, or I could do it just on the kicks. So hopefully you can hear that. And um, that made me think that um, I really wanted to have something like that in the um, audio processor. So that's why there's this little moving bar here and a, a BPM, um, the ability to change the BPM. So this is like a little four bar automation loop. In the pocket operator, it's just one bar. Um, and that means that um, if I press the record button as I move something and then let go, then when the loop comes back around again, it um, replays that thing that I just did. So that's what lets me um, take just a part of the sound and then send it to either the delay or the reverb or both. So uh, to make this a bit clearer, I'll try and do a little demo.
So I uh, hope that um, piques your interest and um, you're interested to see the next step. So after having some fun jams with it on the computer, I decided to take the leap and uh, design a circuit board. And it's always a difficult um, decision to make because it's, uh, it's quite easy to do stuff, easy and quick to do stuff in software. And then as soon as you commit to a circuit board, uh, it's quite a lot of work to um, capture the design and then you've got to make the circuit board, have it fabricated, and then you've got to sold, order and sold all the components that cost time and money and then maybe you've made a mistake or it doesn't work very well. Um, but because um, I was really enjoying it and I really wanted to um, uh, experience playing with it without having the screen there and just having the, the knobs and the buttons, I thought I'll take the plunge and have a go. So in the next video, I'll cover the um, the schematic and the board layout and ordering the boards and show you what was involved in that. So hopefully see you then.